Okay, we've got a bunch of circles here and I want to link them all up to a wiggle expression. So I'm going to come into this and add a slider control. I'm going to call it amplitude and duplicate it and call this one frequency. I'm then going to select all my ellipses and find the position. Specifically the transform position, so I'll select all of them. To get rid of everything else, I'll just hit S on the keyboard twice. And then I'll alt click the position on one of them and I'll type in wiggle. And in brackets, we will link up to the amplitude and then we'll put a comma and we'll link up to the frequency. Then I can copy that expression here and select all the other ones and paste it here. Now using these sliders, we can control how much the circles will wiggle. So if we put a keyframe at both of them and press U on the keyboard to bring these up, and we'll change the frequency to 150 and the amplitude to two and paste the first ones in at the end and easy ease them and speed them up. And that way you can animate expressions. You can also use a color control to easily control the colors of each shape. So I'll make three copies of this. One, two, and three. Coming back into the shape layer, I will select each ellipse and search for its color. And specifically we want the fill color, so we'll just select all of them. And press S twice on the keyboard to solo those. And for each one, I will just alt click it and link it up to one of the controls. For this one, I'll do the second one. For this one, I'll do the third. And then the other two, I'll just randomly pick one. Okay, they're all red now. Let's change some of the colors here. And that's linking effects up to expressions to gain more control of them. EaseCopy is a free script you can get from aescripts.com and here you can name your own price just by typing it in there, although it's always good to pay what you can. As an example of showing this, I've got two squares here where they're moving at different rates. Uh, the blue one has no easing on it, whereas the red does have easing on it. To match the movements of the blue cube and the red cube, I'd have to go into the graph and manually adjust it until it's all right. But this script makes that really easy to do by just selecting all the keyframes that you want to copy, copy them here, select them onto the keyframes you want to paste them onto, and then just paste them on there. And that does it for you. If you go into File, Dependencies, you've got loads of little handy tools here that can help you organize your project. Reduce Project is a really important one of these. So if you select the composition you want to keep in your project and go File, Dependencies, Reduce Project, that will delete everything that's not associated with that composition. So that means every composition that isn't linked to it and every asset that isn't linked to it, every solid, every null will go and you'll be left with just the composition and everything that's relevant to it. Removed unused footage is just the same as Reduce Project, but just keeps all the compositions. Consolidate all footage will delete all duplicated footage throughout the project. And Collect Files is a really important one if you're ever handing your files off to a client. If you collect the files, it'll collect the project file along with all assets into a set folder. This allows you to customize your workflow based on how you want to work. The example I'll use here will be creating a guide layer. So I've got this Instagram stories overlay that I don't want to be in the final render. So I will right click here and set it as a guide layer. And that stops it rendering in the final export. I'll undo this for now as there's no keyboard shortcut for it and I want to set it up. So I'll come into edit, keyboard shortcuts, and I want to use alt and G for it. So I'll search for guide layer and I'll find it there. And I'll just drag it up to G with alt selected and hit OK. Now if I hit Alt G in the keyboard, it will make it a guide layer. You can do this with almost any effect in After Effects and change it to something that's easy enough for you to use. If you've got assets that need to go into one place, you can quicken your workflow by using just one of them and then replacing them afterwards. For example, we've got this blue solid and let's say I needed loads of them. So I'll put one here and another one here. And let's say there are hundreds of these. I can place them all where I want to and then over here, as long as they're the same size, I can replace it by selecting the one I want to replace and then dragging this one down and while holding Alt, I'll drop it on top and it'll replace it. And I'll do that with the one on the left as well with this green solid. And that can work with footage or anything at all. You just need to make sure they're the same size or as close as possible to the same size. If they're not the same size, you may just need to adjust the scale. This last one is a free preset that I've produced and made. 
which helps you use the text animator in a much more easier and organized way. Typically the native text animator in After Effects can get a little bit complicated when you need to open a lot of things up in a text layer. This preset simplifies it for you by having all of it in one place with easy controls to use. So I'll apply it to my text layer here. And the first thing I'm going to do is just change this position to about 200. And it does your standard animate in by character and out by character. The reason this is quite powerful is it's all in one place, but you can animate it so that it can be based on characters as it comes in, but it can be based on word as it goes out. You can also change it so that it comes in as it is there, but what if I want the first word to go out instead of the second? Well, I can animate the shape on it up here and change it to ramp down for going out. And this way it'll go out from the first word, but it'll also come in from the first word. If I wanted it to continue going up as it goes out, instead of it going back down, I just need to add a keyframe on the Y position and change it to minus 200. And now it'll come in going up and go out going up. It's also got all kinds of controls that can create animations like these ones here. I've got another video here where I'll completely break down this effect and how to use it. I'll also show you how to save your own presets with it to make sure you can create text animations as quickly as possible. Thanks for watching, I'll see you over there.